Righto, Teliota champs, and which laptop is which? Which one's AMD? Which one's Intel? Well, eagle eye people know. Blue, Intel. AMD, red. So these are both Lenovo Legion 7s. This is the 7i because it is the Intel version. This is the Legion 7. And they are identical laptops other than the CPUs. Same specs, everything. Although there's a lot more to it because we're going to talk about ports, PCI Express 4, etc. So in this video, and by no means is this my comprehensive comparison that will be coming. So make sure you subscribe for that. But in this video, we're going to do a quick performance comparison we're also going to talk about the key big differences between these two laptops. We're going to talk about SSD speeds and we're going to talk about boot, wake and resume times. We will also talk about battery life between these two because I do have battery life figures. Now both of these laptops have been updated to the latest BIOS, the latest Windows, everything is the latest, latest NVIDIA drivers etc. Somebody asked me about this function refresh rate. The function refresh does not work on the Intel. Okay, I don't know why. I think it's the hotkeys app. I don't think it's anything to do with Intel. If you do function R on this, I can change the refresh rate of this display. But on that one, it just doesn't work. Um, yeah, I don't know why. But other than the differences in the CPU, this one has a 5900HX. This has an Intel 11800H. Not unlocked and it's not their best CPU. You can go two steps up. Oh, actually, you don't have the option of that with this model. So you can actually get 11950HK, which is the unlocked i9 version. This is the top CPU in the Ryzen line. So it's the Ryzen 9HX 5900. So that's equivalent to the i9. This is just sort of like the base sort of 11800. Now, if I just run the performance test of Cinebench on both of them, really, it's neck and neck, right? We're talking 13,591 versus 13,963. Okay, so this is slightly faster. And this is stock, of course. Single core of 1482 and a single core of 1507 on this one. So very close between the two, right? But again, this is the 11800H, it's not the i9. And let me tell you now, I have set some world records with this thing. If I go into Intel XTU, I unlock the CPU to be able to do 4.6 gigahertz. I unlock the power limit. I don't even actually have to undervolt, but if I undervolt, it even gets better and you know uses less power. But I can do like a world record that I've never accomplished on Cinebench with this one, okay? So we're talking over 15,000 on Cinebench. Yes, 15,000. And not only that, over 1,600 on single core. So I've never got those scores before. And I guarantee you, if you had the i9, you'd even go faster, right? Because indeed, this is limited to 4.6 gigahertz all core. I can actually get it to go to 5 gigahertz single core, like the first two cores. If you want to see me do that, and you want to see this really boogie, like <laughs> use an enormous amount of wattage and just hammer really hard, let me know. And I'll put a specific video to that under volt and unlocking the power limit, unlocking like, the, you know, at least putting it to the 4.6 six gigahertz putting at five gigahertz on the single core just give me a thumbs up there so to cut a long story short basically cpu wise there's not much between them and i can get more out of this if i you know unlock it and i'm actually really surprised i can actually use intel xtu on that and of course your mileage may vary on your chip but even stock you'll be able to unlock it to 4.6 all cores no problems you won't even have to undervolt it to do that and I'd really love to see the i9 in this. It would friggin' fly. Now let's quickly talk about SSD speeds. And this may help with, you know, booting and resuming. So there you can see the differences in SSD speed, right? PCI Express 4, this is PCI Express 3. It's not quite double, but it's nearly double. Especially for the reads, which is the most important. I would have no idea how you would actually write to this at those sort of speeds of 5,000. Actually can go over 5,000 with writes. And how you would write to it that fast, I have no idea. You can't do it with Thunderbolt, well that's for sure. But the main thing is 6,600 reads. Actually can go faster than that, but yeah, whatever. 3,400 reads, right? So this is gonna, you know, load stuff faster. PCI Express 4, it's just the future, right? We want PCI Express 4, it's gonna be good. And this will sort of future proof this because when we get Windows 11 and we're going to be using the fast storage for gaming, this of course will get the benefits of that. Maybe not so much with the 3400, but come on, that's still friggin' fast, right? So big advantage here. Also, that's with the GPU too, right? With the GPU, this is connected via eight lanes of PCI Express 3. This thing here 
16 lanes, so double the amount of lanes of this, and PCI Express 4 too. So the bandwidth on this is just much more than this when it comes to connecting the GPU. And when I do my gaming test between the two, make sure you sub up for that. It may be down to just connecting by a 16 lanes of PCI Express 4 versus eight lanes of PCI Express 3 where, you know, sort of like the gaming performance comes where maybe this might be faster just because of that. It may not be the CPU. We don't know because they're not connected by the same amount of lanes to the GPU. So if this is indeed slower than that with gaming, is it the CPU or is it the eight lanes versus 16 lanes? I also will be doing some upgrades on this laptop on the Intel one. We're gonna see if 64 gigs will go in actually both of them. I'll leave a link to the RAM and recommended SSDs in the description. And I actually was gonna put this 980 Pro in this machine, but the SSD is so fast, the stock one, one terabyte one, there's no point me putting this one. And there's no point me putting this as the secondary SSD because it's only PCI Express 3. Because you only get one PCI Express 4 SSD slot, okay? So M.2 slot. So I'm going to end up putting this one. I'll leave a link to this one. This is a 2 terabyte Crucial. I'll put that as the secondary drive in that. Just remember, if you want the fast booting, you're going to want to do it on the PCI Express main drive. So maybe get a big single drive in the PCI Express 4 if you want the fast speeds of loading in that. Because if you do it on a secondary drive, as I said before, it's going to be slower PCI Express 3. So before I do the boot, wake and resume, I'm going to talk about battery life, okay? So clear battery life winner here is definitely the Ryzen system. Now, it's not down to the CPU, right? Because... We have laptops with similar parts to this that get much better battery life than this. So I've seen laptops with same sort of CPU, same sort of GPU get much better battery life than this one does. So my initial thoughts was maybe PCI Express 4, maybe that's why the battery life isn't as good on this one as it is with the AMD. But it's not PCI Express 4 because those laptops I'm talking about do have PCI Express 4. Also the X1 Extreme has PCI Express 4, same sort of parts, only a slightly bigger battery and gets double the battery life as this. The key difference is this one has the MOOC switch, right? Which both of them have. And yeah, the X1 Extreme does have a low wattage GPU, but it shouldn't really matter because, you know, this thing here, the GPU should not be enabled when we're in hybrid mode. So what is it? And let me know down there in the comments because I want you guys to chip in. You guys know a lot. Um, you're very knowledgeable. Why is it that an Intel system, when it has a MOOC switch or has the ability to go to iGPU and hybrid mode and discrete mode, why is it that the battery life really suffers even if you're in hybrid mode? Because it certainly is not happening with the AMD system, right? These both have the same feature of being able to go into hybrid mode. When it comes to battery life between these two, you can get a good seven, maybe even eight hours battery life with the AMD system, right? With this one here, it's about 20% battery loss for about one hour or just over one hour. So you can get about five and a half hours with this Intel system. Of course, this is, you know, in hybrid mode, 60 Hertz, everything turned off. And realistically, I had to put it down to like 30% brightness to get that five and a half hours, right? And that's draining the battery to zero. In all reality, you're never gonna do that. So I would say four and a half hours is the real battery life of this versus say seven maybe seven and a half eight if you lower the brightness on this so in reality this has about three hours extra battery life than this but again that's not just the cpu there's something going on i want to know what it is because as i've said before you can get you know 11th gen laptops with the same sort of parts that don't have a mook switch to have more comparable battery life to this so what is it please <laughs> we want to know there's one thing too, you gotta to know. I'll leave a link in the description to Gordon Mahone, PC World sort of um, article when it comes to Intel versus AMD on battery. It seems that Intel performs better on battery. It seems to be that AMD are more conservative when it comes to boosting and you know getting the job done using power. This one actually uses a bit more power, but it is faster. In the description, check out the article. It's too long to go through. Just go through it yourself and, and come up with your own mind made in regards to battery life. But without a doubt, if you're just doing general web surfing, you know, watching content, lightweight work, you're gonna be getting about three hours better battery life with this one. Stay tuned for more on this, but um, just generally speaking, I, can, I have done some gaming benchmarks and it does seem that this one is faster. Stay tuned for the full results of that. But it seems to be now, just quickly, if we look at it, this has the better battery life, but for all other things, this is 
probably slightly better with the Intel there. Thunderbolt 4, of course this does not come with Thunderbolt 4, this one does. The Intel HD which is used by a lot of you know applications so you get some optimizations with that. You get the machine learning optimizations for say plugins in Lightroom and stuff like that as well. Also as we've seen the PCI Express 4 for the GPU and the SSD super fast so now usually you would say the AMD is cheaper and it's better value but this was actually less than this same configuration so I don't know what's going on there maybe it's because this has the HX you know Ryzen 9 and this is just the base 11800 but as you saw before it is still faster